Hello, welcome to another quad sim update. Didn't think I'd be uh, here again quite so quickly, but I figured it might be useful to do small and regular iterations rather than putting a whole bunch of features in, releasing them, and then people reporting bugs and then having to dig through much more code to find out what the problem is. Also, despite having three new quads over here to fly and review, the weather has been so awful in the UK that I haven't been able to do anything, so I have had some time free to uh, concentrate on fixing this. So I had a couple of things that I really wanted to work on and a few things that people reported. So I'll show you what was the problem first with the old version. And this is the bounds checking and the clipping through the floor. So first example, if you flew out and away and the sort of idea is that this is a sort of big island floating here and uh, you know, the, the big empty void is the sea to not go in. But if you flew out of this and uh, you could go underneath and uh, see all sorts of rubbish underneath. Uh, you could fly back through it, but it's a bit weird. Similarly, if you crashed, you can just use the stick to try and turn yourself over, and that will sort of force the quad through the floor, um, and you're underneath again. So if you ever come across this weird void where you can't see anything, that's where you are. Um, if you look at the right place, you can see the ground and details above yourself, and you can get back through them and get back to it. But that, that wasn't really good. So I'll show you what we've got in version 0.41 now. Just a 4.1 because it's a minor thing. So if we take off now and uh, we'll try and go out of bounds first. Essentially it just it's just going to stop you. If you get to the edge of the world, like uh, this is the first place we can get to, you'll just end up stopping flying. It looks like you keep going but if you turn around it's like hey I'm still still inside so you won't be able to do that similarly um, if we go for a crash now let's have this nice bit of uh, ground over here to turn ourselves upside down big old crash you'll notice two things have happened one is the props have stopped and if I try and put the throttle on nothing's going on and if I try and make the quad do anything it's not going to work so we've kind of got a crash detection now so it knows you crashed, it's not going to let you do anything, so you're going to have to turn your quad up the right way to sort that out. So we already had the reset button by pressing R, and that takes you back to landing mat, which is a bit uh, inconvenient. So if you sort of, you know, you've flown away somewhere over in the city, let's say, let's get over there very quickly, and you've crashed down here because you want to do something specific, then it's going to be a bit annoying if you have to reset. So we've now got the F button. If you press F, what it effectively does is pick you up, turn your road over and plonk you back down again and, and you're good to go from there. So the other thing we now have is sound. Um, if you start the props now, you will hear a droney sound, <laughs> a drone for your drone. Uh, I have to say, it's not the greatest sound in the world. This was a case of sort of looking for some royalty free samples that were free to use and, and seeing what I could do there. Uh, so I want to go back and potentially revisit this and make it better because basically I've just got one sound which varies the pitch of for the, the quad itself um, but it, it kind of works um, and although it sounds a little bit wrong when I sort of went back to the other version it was really weird to um, try flying something without sound that said though if you really don't like it for the quad noises the button S, if you're flying along and you press the button S, sound will disappear. And then you press it and it come back again. And uh, we've not got many sounds, but we've got a couple. We've got obviously the one for flying the quad, that's a sound. We've got the, uh, the ball, the ball bounces on its own and makes its own noise if we go ahead and give it a clunk or just crash. The ball will bounce along and do its own bouncing noise. Um, and of course, should we crash, we get a crash noise and everything stops. And that crash noise is the only noise I'm afraid I have for contact with things. So should we crash into something else like, uh, let's say one of these hoops. No, <laughs> whenever you want to do something, you never can. Oh, there we go crashed. Uh, that will make that noise. Where it doesn't make a noise is if you land on the, the normal bottom because I haven't figured out what is going to be 
a crash versus what needs to make a noise in terms of if you if you sort of go down and just land. So if you're landing on the regular ground, you won't hear anything. If you crash, i.e. you go upside down, you'll hear something. Now, one of the things that people reported to me about having a problem with the controllers is one of these little things. This is this uh, this is what's called a nine-in-one simulator. It was made years ago for sims like uh, Phoenix and Aerofly and G3, G5, um, and they use a uh, train cable. Typically, uh, something like a phono, you'll also have a DIN type plug, and they would plug into the old trainer port at the back of uh, an old radio instead of USB. Um, people were saying this, this, these weren't working for them, so I dug my one out and I did find there was a problem. So I'm using my old Tony 9X here, and the problem was, um, well, there's not so much a problem, but generally speaking, it would have channels one, two, three, and then this channel would be six for some reason. We don't know why. Uh, and when people were trying to remap it, it wasn't working. And the reason why is because all these uh, USB sticks, when they present themselves to the operating system, this is part of the, the HID um, options, um, they say, I've got six axes and I've got something like 12 buttons. Even though they don't have physical buttons, um, that's how it's presented. And this is not unique to uh, these USB joysticks. The Tyrannus actually shows itself up as having eight axis and 24 buttons. I, I first thought this was definitely a bug with the, the way the system's looking at it, but I checked the OpenTX source code and they're, they're using their 32 channels, but they're only using eight of them as axis. And then the, the other 24 channels are being used as buttons for some weird reason. Anyway, on these USB, um, sticks at least certainly the one i've had and i've i've asked a few people to test some code we seem to have um a one of these phantom buttons that would pulse on and off so when you were doing the controller remap before you got a chance to move your stick the button would trigger and that would grab the information and try and uh, assign like your or whatever to a, to a button so you never got to use it so the, there's a fix for that that um uh, is in this version of the code, so hopefully that should get a bit more compatibility with these. When you're using these, if you go into your radio and joystick setup, um, with this particular one, um, it was it's always easier to make things work when you've got it in front of you. So this thing comes up as being a Sailey simulator, and there are various modes you can run it in. Um, one is XDR, the other one is uh, G5, or G5 or above, like there's G7 and stuff. Either of those two modes worked for me. Uh, with other people, one of them worked and then one didn't. And with some people that their controller comes up with as unknown, we can't seem to get it working at all. Um, if I had it in front of me, I could probably make it work. I'm having problems working out what the problem is without me seeing it. Um, there's a little wiki page on this as well that I'm trying to add to when problems come up. And in that page, I also talk about this Windows 10 USB driver that has a lot of the more modern radios, the Tyrannuses and Jumpers of this world, having a problem with the USB driver and suddenly not working as a SIM. So check that out if you're having problems. Uh, descriptions down below as per normal. But yeah, anyway, this uh, old 9X working working well with that. Uh, other ones are, are varying. If I can get hold of these actual physical things and check them out, I might be able to get more working. But hopefully this fix will give more of you with those adapters a, a better chance of it running. So if it didn't work before, give it a go. Before you give it a go, it's worth out wiping out the saved data you have. Again, there's a, a bit about how to do that in the uh, wiki page, uh, link down below. Uh, this is because some of the settings you might have done can mess with the, the new settings coming in. This is a bit of a pain to do because it's like a, a registry edit for Windows at the moment. So I will have a button coming up to say restore to defaults, which will basically reset everything and wipe out that saved data, which I think will be easier. Um, a few small cosmetic changes in this uh, particular build as well. You will notice we have some clouds available on the screen now. This is just to add just a little bit of depth to uh, the background. I felt the sort of the, the gradient was a little bit boring, so there's a little bit more to it now. Uh, there's also an extra beach ball hidden somewhere in the scene, see if you can find it. It shouldn't be too hard to find, and if you want to challenge yourself, Try and dislodge it, there's another clue, from where it is and get it down towards the ball, the current ball, um, and see if you can do it without that ball bouncing out of bounds because that's quite an interesting chase to do. 
Uh, and lastly, I found out I can do a Windows 32 build. There were a bunch of people that had older systems lying around. It turned out they were running 32-bit versions of Windows. Uh, I found out that Unity can still build 32-bit Windows. Um, it didn't seem to be there before. I don't know where I was missing. But um, yeah, I'll have that available in the uh, releases. And people were still asking me where to download this from. Again, in the description, it links to uh, releases from GitHub. You do have to expand a little thing that says assets and under there are all the builds. And this particular release is called 0.41. It's the latest one, it's at the top. So if you can't find it, there's, there's, no, there's no hope for you. I can't help you anymore. So what to do next? I had a bunch of things to work on um, and you'll find them again in GitHub on issues. But I figured why not throw it open to you guys? So um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try and have a poll. The poll should appear here but it only like appears as this little box. So if you click on the eye, you'll see the poll options. Have you got them up there? Okay. So I'm gonna explain what each one uh, means. So number one is about mapping keyboard actions to switches. So right now, if you crash, you press R or F to reset it or flip it back. If you want that as like a switch, reset position or flip your quad or something like that, uh, then vote for that one and I will do that next. The next one, uh, the preset rates, is about being able to add uh, more easy rates to beginners. Um, although we've got something up there that says, here's your super rate, here's your RC rate, and stuff like that. People who don't know beta flight, don't know how to use that, and so don't know how to tune it right for them. So when they start whacking their sticks about and see their quad doing this, they don't, they don't want that. They want a nice smooth movement. So that's the option to do like a beginner, intermediate, advanced rates and tailor them for both a radio and something like a game controller, which has, of course, much smaller sticks. The third one is the line of sight option. Uh, a bunch of people requested this. Uh, it's the ability to pretend you're standing there and watching your quad is flying in third person. So we have to build something as sort of a fake person to look at the quad, to be able to follow the quad around. If it flies out of range, I can't do anything about it. You've gone too far, but yeah, basically to be able to follow the quad around so you can control it um, and have line of sight. And, uh, Obviously, it'd be quite handy if we could flip between the two modes of line of sight and FPV easily as well. And the last one is, is the drone vehicle. The um, I mentioned it right at the start of the project about it wouldn't be fun to have something like a, a drone drone, I call it. So another quad flying that you could chase. And we've since expanded that up to people saying, well, what about a plane? What about a car? And so if we, if we did this one, it would probably be a car because that's the easiest thing to implement driving either around the city, although that track's a bit small, or out in the desert somewhere that you could practice uh, following. Um, you know, like those people, uh, it seems to be that the thing to do right now is follow drift cars around and get some amazing footage back from the quads doing this. So if you like that, vote for that one. But hopefully if you've pressed that little I think, your votes are down here. Uh, and if you vote for them, whatever it comes out with in the next week or so, I will do that for next time. Um, which, depending on the difficulty, could be weeks or months away, but we'll see how it goes. And that's it for this update. Of course, if you've still got problems on your controllers, making sure you've deleted your saved data and uh, you've got the update and uh, you've tried all the stuff, please let me know and uh, we'll see if we can get it sorted. I can't promise to fix all the problems, but, you know, we'll have a go. Any bugs or weirdness you find or features you'd like, there is the email address down below. There's the issues on the GitHub page. Again, the links are below. Look at the description, expand it. It's got lots of info. Yeah, and that's about it. So yeah, happy flying on the sim. I hope more of you can fly it now and uh, have some fun with it. And uh, I will get on with the next one. Of course, in the meantime, please uh, thumbs up, like, subscribe, click on the bell, wherever it may be. And I'll catch you uh, in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.